going on people of YouTube and welcome to a rather quiet Boffins and Tank Museum. I'm here with Joe Bateman, thank you very much to him for bringing me up here, very much, thank you very much to his dad. And before we start this video, I've got something I need to show you. I've got a GoPro Hero LCD for Christmas, so this is a di slightly different view to the channel than normal. I'm looking forward to creating lots of awesome content with this and the suction cups and the everything and I hope you enjoy it so yeah let's get into this vlog bruh look at this dude look at his hair <laughs> so I really fucked up I left my wireless on on my GoPro so it's now dead but that is the only left existing male Mark one tank left in the world You can see the engine in there. Inside of Mark 9. Can't see it. This right here is an Armatech model. It's worth seven grand. They sell it as a kit that you build yourself. It's all you can get RC internals, but nothing's in there at the minute. But this is impressive. I mean, it's so, so big. That's what she said. But like, here's my hand compared to this. Uh, that is huge. What's that? Very nice. They're assembling this little exhibition called Tiger Alley, where they've got all the variants of the tiger. So it's Tiger One, Tiger One, freshly imported Ferdinand. They uh, bought this from America. There's uh, this King Tiger. There's the Yag Tiger Two, and then there's the there's a uh, Panzer Six Model B King Tiger. But you look at how big and important impressive this is. Oh. I've, been, uh, I've been following the importing of this on Facebook and I've just been so impressed by everything. Look at the, the sheer size of it. So this, uh, this Ferdinand is a tank destroyer based on the chassis of a Porsche Tiger. Hitler wanted a new heavy tank after the Panzer IV. And he ordered for a uh, for two companies to go at each other, Henschel Tiger and Porsche. And the winning one, obviously, was this one because this one broke down three times in the same tests. Yeah, the Porsche chassis was just thrown to one side and forgotten about. So later on, when they were calling for a heavy tank destroyer, they made one based on this chassis and one made on this chassis. Like this actually runs and drives. Yeah, that's the this thing. impressive. This is a working Tiger 10. Like, this has been through the war. It's literally been shot at. It's had its turret jammed. It's been disassembled, drawn plans off, and then reassembled, and then just bought here. That's a good point. Yeah, it's insane, isn't it? They just the whole thing apart, Yeah. This was the first ever captured Tiger 1. A very nice example of a uh, M26 Pershing. Moving around here, we've got the Panzer 1, a Ram Kangaroo. I think I spoke about this in the last Bobbins video, but these tanks are actually one of my favourite. Little Jag Panzer 38T. But they are quite a fast and mobile tank and do dish out quite a bit of a punch if you use the 105 mil. But if, uh, if you're using the, the lower caliber guns, they're still quite good against the lower tier tanks. But I enjoy playing this tank. I enjoyed grinding through it towards the Stug. And then I gave up on the Stug because the Stug wasn't as good as this. This tank here is a canal defense light. It's based on a Matilda 4 chassis. 
but it has a massive light in the turret and it would scan all the, all the canals and the coasts for uh, enemy ships. But it was so secret that it never actually saw action. This tank here is an A38 Valiant. It was part of the campaign to replace the cruiser, the Crusader, which is over there. This, uh, this also went up against the Cromwell. Obviously, the Cromwell was more popular. This thing here is just unexplainably mad. It's a tortoise. It weighs uh, 72 tons, I think it is. 78 tons. What's that? Tortoise. It weighs 78 tons. Yeah. Tracks are huge. They're about a meter wide. What was it? 25 pounder gun. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's cheap. And the armor was all not very big caliber, but. Uh, caliber, even. No. But the uh, shell velocity was insane. Yeah. And the actual firepower behind the, in the round was just. Yeah. So you didn't really need the, uh, no, you didn't, no. the Germans and the Russians. Yeah. They had to have a massive caliber and a massive gun. Yeah. We had little ones that really killed. The little are the less resistant, so the. Yeah. Of pen. Yeah. It's a Panzer IV. I'm not too sure on these tanks, but this tank has got the uh, extra armour around the turret. Oh, it's an archer. See, this is what me, the museums, mainly consists of. Just walking around aimlessly, pointing cameras at things. This is very pretty intact, to be honest. I'm not a massive fan of these tanks, to be honest, but I can see other people liking them. This, that one in the corner is a TOG 2. That weighs 80 tons of heaviest tank in the museum, told you that before. This is a, it's a Khalid, DJ Khalid. It's a, it's got a, it's a Chieftain, which is what this is, but it's got a better engine, it's upgraded and everything. So we've got a Sultan, uh, FE301 I think he is, I don't know. And then we have Challenger 1, Chieftain and the Conqueror. But Joe here actually works on Elvis tanks. And then the uh, Scorpion in the corner here. He knows a lot about these tanks actually. Since the last time I visited the museum, I picked myself up one of these as a comet. It's a tank after the Cromwell, which is my favourite tank. But, uh, as of recently, I've fully upgraded it and I really like it. This is a Centurion one. This is a tank after the comet. This is a tier 8. And then it goes Centurion 7 one and Centurion AX. Previously, in, uh, a few updates ago, it was uh, Centurion 7 one, then FV4202P. That has been moved down to tier 8 premium. And uh, all, the, all people that had an FV4202 kept their premium tank, were given a premium, the premium variant, and given a Centurion Action X. I find this a pretty impressive tank as well. It's, it's, a, it's a Black Prince, it was a follow on to the Churchill Mark 7. It's just bigger, heavier, more armour, bigger gun. This tank behind me is the Spitfire 103. It's a new Swedish uh, tank. It's got a hydro pneumatic suspension, which means that this whole, the whole tank is tilted up and down like that by uh, hydraulics. The, uh, because this gun in the front, the 105mm main armament, is completely fixed in place. The uh, traverse is done by the tracks and the elevation and depression is done by the suspension. This is currently what I'm working to on World of Tanks, my tier 5 at the minute. Look how angled the armour is, it's literally a cheese wedge. So it's starting to get a bit busier now, we're just making our way down the Centurion uh, production line. This tank is amazing, it looks so good, performs really well. I think it's a worthy successor for the Comet. We're heading up into this chopped up Centurion. Creep forward slowly, slowly. I want to see over that hammer. Oh, 
engage reverse. Tango 6 to Alpha is at grid So we've had a bit of lunch and we're just heading down into the tank store a bit with uh, with all the Cromwells and British tanks in there. To the top of the teeth there. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last time we here, Tiger 131 was just there. Now <laughs> we all the oil splatters then. Yeah, yeah, we will. Nice. The turret on this Panther is an earlier production one, because you can tell, because it's all round. Later on in the war, we added a uh, flat piece just here, down, made it all solid metal, because the, the Shermans were taking, taking these Panthers out by bouncing a shot off the mantle and down into the weaker turret armour. I just read the plaque on the turret and it says the last vehicle off the production line in 1945. It's a Centurion, I'm not sure what mark it is, I think it's a three? Is it three? I don't know what to say. I don't know what mark this one is. This is a mark three. We're back with the bay. Now you see, Joe introduced me to this tank ages ago when he was first playing. And he... he it was the first check, first line he went down, I believe. And he's been playing it ever since he got the game. But yeah, he still has it today, and we both platoon two or three times a week in this tank. I'm absolutely awful in this tank, but I enjoy it. If you if you check out my statistics on war gaming, it was me will be something like 46% win rate, which is awful. But I just enjoy bounding around in this tank with my friends and with my brother as well. He, he played with us a few times, but he doesn't play as much anymore, so yes. Massive thumbs up for this tank. This tank is the M48 pattern, American tier 10 medium. I've played this tank on the, uh, on the World of Tanks common test server and I absolutely love it. It is like a tier 10 Cromwell basically but there's a lot more armour, it makes it a lot more versatile. So you can use your turret in a hold down position, you can use the gun depression, and you can use the massive gun it has. And the quick rate of fire means that you can dish a lot of damage and just get out of there quickly. So, also thumbs up for this tank. The other day I was watching combat dealers with all of these and it just made me really, really want to buy one. Just, they just look so cool. Who doesn't want a tracked bike, honestly? This looks pretty cool, but... I don't really like the, the, these either, but they are a good scout. It's coming 
time. It is. <laughs> well done. Can wait next time. I enjoyed these actually. I enjoyed my, I enjoyed my journey in the M3 Lee. Not everybody does. You don't. I think you don't. shit. I like them. They're fun. I don't like them. What? They are fun, but They're fun. awful. Huh? That is your typical suicide scout vehicle, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same with any Stuart. Any light armor tank there? Yeah. Get killed a lot. Leopard one. I really do like these tanks. I've played these on the test server as well. And I really do enjoy them. But when it rolls away. These are very good tanks. T72. There's a chieftain around there. There's a gun there. But yeah. I like these tanks. Very, very mobile. Just take a look at these guns, okay? There's a human next to this gun. This one just here is from a Challenger 2. Num barrel number 6 just here, the biggest one, is from a Conqueror, which is the tier 9 British Heavy. It's a big gun. This is the Russian tier 10 medium, the T62. These are supposed to be really good tanks. However, I don't see the difference between the Object 140 and the T-62A. So, if anyone wants to educate me, then go ahead. Plated Challenger 1 model. present. Gold one. Gold Challenger 2. Out one. Eh? Gold Challenger 1. Yeah. Whose was that then? Where's that come from? I don't know. If you fall, I'm falling too. If you call, I'm calling too. What you want, I want to do. Okay. I will. Oh, I've stolen all the tanks, the cheeky bastards. <laughs> Lovely.